All right, let's start with our first set of slides. Um, the first thing is going to be an overview of the course, just to tell you what this course is going to be about and what it is not going to cover. So what we want to do in this course is provide you enough background so that you can go on and uh, learn more on your own or take other courses or apply it uh, for your trading or for your job. Uh, basically give you enough uh, material that you are comfortable enough to, to continue on your own. Or uh, you may want to do more studies, including graduate studies on this topic, uh, work in industry, uh, your own business, whatever you find this uh, useful for. A little bit about the prerequisites in terms of what you need to know to successfully take advantage of this course. Um, you need to know your calculus, especially uh, also probability and statistics uh, based on calculus. Uh, be able to compute uh, expected values as integrals, for example, um, especially related to normal distribution. You also, it's helpful to have some basic knowledge of differential equations. It's not strictly mandatory, but it's going to be easier uh, to keep up with the course if you know what differential equations are. It doesn't have to be much more than that. I will do it from the scratch in the course. Uh, but for example, we will, know, uh, we will have to know how to solve an uh, ordinary linear differential equation. For some problems, it is also useful to be able to do a little bit of programming or at least uh, uh, be able to use uh, Excel to compute uh, formulas or even uh, maybe Visual Basic to program something or any other programming language. So let me give you a rough outline of the course in terms of what is going to be covered throughout uh, the several weeks that we have. First, uh, we are just going to make sure that we all know what the basic securities are and that's going to be stocks and bonds. Uh, and then we are going to introduce uh, derivative securities and particular options. Um, after we talk about uh, basic uses of options and basic definitions, we are going to start uh, pricing payoffs that are paid in the future. And that's the basic topic, the main topic of the course, is how to price something that uh, will be delivered in the future. We are going to start with the easiest possible uh, thing to price, which is pricing payoffs which are known, uh, you know you will get $100 in three months, uh, what is the value of that today? Okay, those are going to be deterministic payoffs, deterministic in the sense that they are not random, they are not stochastic, uh, but the same principle that we will be using for pricing deterministic payoffs is also going to be applied to random payoffs. So that's why we are going to go through deterministic payoffs first. It's really just the usual present value computations but we are going to try to make a connection uh, with uh, random payoffs in terms of the basic principle of pricing. Um, also related to that, we are going to define uh, interest rates, uh, spot interest rates, forward interest rates, uh, and uh, bond prices, bond yields, and things like that. And then the main part of the course is going to be about pricing stochastic random payoffs. Uh, in particular, the main example is going to be pricing options. Uh, and how are we going to do that? There is going to be the main assumption, and basically for a while the only assumption we are going to make, is, uh, there, is that there is no arbitrage in the market, uh, meaning that there is no way to make money, make profits uh, without risk and without losses from zero investment. And that's going to be the principle of no arbitrage. Uh, and under that assumption, uh, at least in some models, it's going to be possible to uniquely define the price of uh, payoffs. Uh, those models are called complete market models. We are going to define that later. But in particular, our main model, which is going to be the Black-Scholes model, uh, and the discrete version of the Black-Scholes model called binomial trees model, those are going to be complete market models, whatever that means. But in particular, that's going to mean that's going to mean that uh, there is a unique price for each random payoff, or random or non-random, uh, and that makes the you know that, that, that makes it much easier uh, to decide what the price is, since there's going to be only one uh, consistent with no arbitrage. 
Uh, that's not necessarily realistic, but it's the benchmark, it's the basic uh, model to start from uh, and keeps things simple, having one and only price for each payoff. Now, in reality, you have a range of prices, you have a bid-ask spread, uh, and people don't, not, don't necessarily agree what a fair price is, but for the most part of this course, we are going to concentrate on these models where there is a unique price. Um, all right, uh, to actually do the, st uh, do the Plex Scholes model, uh, we need uh, a little bit more serious mathematics. In particular, we will talk about uh, so called stochastic calculus or ethos calculus. And the main uh, rule, uh, which is called ETHOS rule, introduce a Brownian motion process. These are all the tools, mathematical tools, that we need to understand exactly uh, the Black Scholes model and the Black Scholes, uh, Black Scholes Merton uh, type pricing. Um, so after we do that, and we are going to have kind of an engineering approach to that, meaning that uh, we will learn how to use it. If when you use standard calculus, you don't necessarily need to remember how to prove those theorems. You just need to know the rules uh, of calculus to be able to apply it. Uh, that's what we are going to do with stochastic calculus. We are going to learn the main rules uh, and, and how to apply them, in particular to derive lectures formula and similar pricing rules. Uh, so. That's what we are going to do next. We are going to derive the Black Scholes formula, uh, variations on the Black Scholes formula for different options, different situations. In the other second main part, so one main part of the course is pricing things. The other part is hedging or risk management uh, in terms of having to deliver a random payoff. How can you make sure that you have enough money to do that? And that's gonna, there's going to be an uh, notion of replication random of random payoffs or hedging of random payoffs. So that's the kind of the second main thing that we want to do in this course, pricing and hedging. Uh, we will do that uh, for most of the course uh, on uh, examples mostly using equities, meaning stocks. Uh, and then at the end of the course, we are also going to talk about fixed income derivatives and options in the bond market, okay, in the markets where, where uh, fixed income instruments are traded, in particular, in particular bonds. Uh, so what is not going to be covered in the course? Uh, e we are not going to go into in practical implementation issues, which are really what is difficult uh, in the real world to do. One, once you know this theory, to actually apply it, you have to decide what the parameters of your model are. Uh, and that means either some kind of statistical estimation or calibration. I'll talk a little bit about that, but very little. Uh, we are going simply, we are in this course, we are simply going to assume that we know those parameters. Somehow they have been estimated or calibrated, and then we produce pricing formulas or hedging strategies. Uh, now, in reality, of course, you have to decide on what those parameters are. We are also not going to do numerical methods. Uh, mostly we are going to look at examples in which you can actually find analytical formulas, so there is no need for numerical methods, but in many cases uh, you cannot actually find analytic and explicit solutions, so numerics is necessary, but uh, that we will not do in this course. Uh, <coughs> All right, uh, just maybe another final remark on uh, why we are doing uh, bonds at the, at the very end. Uh, turns out, uh, even though bonds, uh, you know what they will pay in the future, like let's say $100 three months from now, for stocks you don't know that. Uh, however, for if you're thinking of a Google stock, um, that's like one point that is moving in time that you have to model. Right? That's, uh, that's uh, one single value that changes every, every day or every second, whatever. Uh, but it's a one-dimensional thing that um, it's moving through time, a uh, stochastic process, one-dimensional stochastic process, uh, and that's what we are, the black scholes merton model is going to model. Now with bonds, let's say U.S. Uh, government treasury bonds, uh, you have of the same type, you have many bonds of the same type. Right? You have a 
three-year bond, a five-year bond, a ten-year bond, so in fact uh, bonds of the same type with many maturities. Uh, in, in, in fact, what we are going to assume typically in a mathematical model that you have infinitely many, continuously many maturities of the bonds of the same type. So it's not just one point that you have to model, you have to model many or infinitely many points moving at the same time through, through time. Right? So it's a multidimensional, even infinitely dimensional modeling problem. Uh, and that's why, uh, and you have to make sure that, that modeling three-year bond makes sense versus the model for the five-year bond so that there is no arbitrage in your model. Okay? It has to be completely consistent. So this is why uh, modeling bonds is actually harder because you have, you have to simultaneously, you have to model bonds of many maturities in a correlated way. They have to be correlated in a way that makes sense. All right, well, this is jumping way too ahead. That's going to be the very end of the course. Uh, right now, this is all, all for the overview.